Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the second part of Brad Westfall's really excellent series of tutorials on getting the most out of React and Friends. I'll have a link in the description below to his tutorials, to the corresponding repo, and so on and so on. You know what it is. Shout out to Brad for making this really excellent material. Shout out to Facebook for making React the awesome tool it is. Shout out to you for being a wonderful audience and hitting that like and subscribe button. Am I right? Am I right? All right, moving on. Let's dive right in and, and let's just look at, at the website as it is now. So mind you, we're in part in the in the part two folder. So your gulp server should be running from there. First off, you'll notice that CSS has made a big breakthrough since the last one. And now everything looks nice, but that's not why we're here. But at least your eyeballs aren't gonna bleed from looking at the screen anymore, so that's good. Now clicking around, you'll see a very familiar website that's just expanded a little bit. And in particular, when you click on a user, you see a lot more than just the ID, right? There's the name, there's a list of links to repos that he's working on on GitHub, there's the Twitter username, there's a picture of his smiley face. So what was the major transformation that went on under the hood here? Well, the big thing is a switch from static content to dynamic content. So whereas before in the first one, there was a hard-coded list of users with their hardcore links. Now that's not the case anymore. Now we're pulling the list of users from a local API and we're pulling the GitHub information from another place entirely, which as you can imagine is the GitHub API. Now, by the way, and, and you might not have realized this, but the Gulp server is giving you a front-end app on port 3000, which you knew, uh, but also a back-end server at port 3001. So incidentally, if you navigate to localhost 3001 slash user slash one, you actually do, you actually do get a real response. And it's a, it's a JSON object rather than a localhost refuse to connect if you did like localhost 9001, for example. Now, having dynamic templates gives you the need or gives you the opportunity to split out your components into a couple different varieties. And this is a really important thing to be aware of. So whereas the last tutorial had all the information that got displayed in one place, now we're splitting it into two different places. There's one type of component which is called a container component and there's one that's called a presentation component. What does that mean? The container component essentially picks up the data, whether it's from an API or what have you. We call it the state. And from there the data gets passed down to the presentation component. Now when data goes into a presentation component it becomes something that can be accessed there in that presentation component called props. And we saw we saw this dot props for example in the last one. Alright, so so look at this. Here's here's the, the big example. Look for the user profile container JS that's in components containers. There's and there's actually a lot going on here. So the first part is the get initial state which basically sets the keys that we'll be setting values to later on. So that's things like, you know, name, image URL, Twitter, and so on. Now, right after that is the component did mount, which, all right, so this is, this is really important. So look at this. It takes the props from the URL, user ID. It takes the user ID from, from the URL, and it makes an API call to that server that we were talking about before, the the one that's running at localhost 3001. And with that response, it sets these here to be the items from that API response. So what you get is profile, and you're setting this, this key to be profile.name, image URL to be, you know, image URL, and so on. Now, when you get to the render part of the component down here, it's really easy because all you have to pass, or all you have to do is pass this dot state to the user profile component. And there's no, you'll see there's no more HTML here. 
or even any kind of markup other than the single tag user profile and you're sending it this dot state so that's all this right now remember what I said the state of one component becomes the props of the child one that's where we are now so come over here to user profile JS and this this presentation component is called stateless because there's just the view there's just the visuals this is how the HTML is going to be set up this is how we want the data to look in relation to each other but there's not there's no API calls here there's no transforming of data going on here this is just what it's gonna look like by the time your person's name gets here by the time his Twitter name gets here repos get here and whatever it it is in the format that it's going to be and so there's gonna be no more working on it in this particular component now what you'll notice is you have an object called props and that is the object that you can get your get your values from you, you know you get the name you get the Twitter and whatnot so look at lines 15 through 19 now this is looping through all the repos for that user now what you might be thinking is okay here's the database right and so you see that's where the ID, the name, the GitHub, and whatnot, that's where that all comes from. So that makes sense that there'd be like a pretty straightforward map from like name here to, you know, name here. But you'll, you'll definitely also notice there's no, there's no list of GitHub repos in here. So, so what's going on? Well, you know, where does that come from, right? And the answer to that is that it comes from this user API. Recall from here where we're doing the, the actual get request. And part of that, part of this user API get profile, which is this one, you're passing it that ID right here, right? Once that call completes its initial call to localhost 3001, there's also an API call that gets sent to the GitHub API down here, whose results are pushed into the profile object that ultimately gets returned to the container component back here. So you can see it here, GitHub repos, the, the variable GitHub repos gets set from these results data, and then profile repos get set to that one, and then profile comes back to here. So this is profile repos, and that's this profile repos. And that's how the, the data flows through. That's how you get the repos and the image URL and, you know, and, and everything that makes the profile aesthetically pleasing and informative for, for a given person. Now, the last bit to point out is that there are two other API calls that are relevant to the list page, get users and delete user. And get user is pretty straightforward. It calls the local API right here to get the list and returns the result in an object you can loop through. The delete user is a little more involved though because it entails more than just the API call. You also have to update the view. So you can see that in userless container JS when you click the delete button for a user like this, right? When you click that delete button, it does make this API call delete user it does make that call but in addition to that it takes the users in the current state this dot state die users it takes them all and filters them to exclude the object with the ID that got passed when delete user was called and it sets the state it resets the state this state it becomes new users so it's the old one minus the one that got deleted and that's how you're able to get this very smooth UI to show up and don't worry if you kill the server and restart it all the all the people come back so it's okay they're not really gone now hopefully I haven't pickled your brain with going through too much all at once definitely poke around and play with it yourself I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you all in the next one